Hi everyone, Brienne here from Pixite, and today I'm going to be coloring a piece from Annabelle, also known from Annabelle's Drawing. She is a collaborator of ours and you might have seen videos and different things of her from Pigment and in Zinnia, so both. So in honor of her being a part of our lovely team, I'm going to color a piece from her talent, her talented drawings that she has made. And I'm going to show you how to import as well as, as part of the process. If you're a regular importer, then you know this, but a lot of people don't know that you can import or how exactly to import. So I just wanted to touch base on that really quickly as well. So to import, super simple, it's honestly painless, easy process. It's the corner button here, it says import. So all you have to do is just touch that button and then go to, you can take a picture directly from your iPad or device and you can convert that in color and grayscale. Or if you have stuff in iCloud or Dropbox, you can also import files from there. The easiest method I find, or the quickest method, is to just go to load your photo. Well, these are both quick as well, but I personally just always go to load photo. Um, I've tried these and they work just as well. So whatever you find is uh, where you're keeping all your pictures that you want to import, you can definitely take pictures right on the spot or use iCloud or Dropbox. So we're gonna load photo. So as you can see, I have quite a bit of different coloring pages and projects in here. Now, I know because I just saved this picture to my camera roll that this is the picture that I'm going to be coloring today. So all you do is simply click on the picture. It's going to get it's imported now, but it's going to ask you if you want to rotate it or keep it straight. I don't want to do anything with this now that I did that. I can't get it back to zero. No, zero, zero. There, and you can flip it if you want. You can do whatever you want when you're importing the photo, but we're just gonna keep it regular. I honestly rarely ever change um, the settings and you can always just hit reset. Like I was trying to get that, but let's say I do that and I'm having a hard time hitting zero, just go to reset and it brings you back. So then you go to next and then you have three options. You can go to original, light, or bold. Now in this case, I don't see much of a difference, but if you're importing like let's say grayscales or a picture that you've taken with your camera, you will notice the difference. Um, but we're just gonna keep it on original anyway. So, and then you just hit this little check mark at the top right hand corner and voila, you got your import. So it's very, very easy to do. And um, if you wanna try the Dropbox method, like let's say you have a Dropbox account and you have lots of stuff in there, that also works well. I have done it from there. I just have so much photos and stuff on my camera roll that I prefer to use the camera roll, but whatever works for you, all methods are great. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Now let's get started on this piece. It's kind of cool. She has funky makeup. Um, there's a lot of fun things that we can do here. I don't think that she necessarily has to be uh, like a perfect skin tone. We can maybe do some reddish uh, tones in the skin tone and whatnot. Okay, so I am actually going to, to blend her skin because there's so many different um, details on her face with uh, the lines over the eyes and then the speckles on the face. I just want to get a very seam line uh, shading up through like when I'm doing my contouring. So I'm just going to put it on freehand mode to eliminate uh, any issues that I might have. Now I'm going to pick a color palette. So these are my colors that I have made. Um, you can do this very easily as well. Um, it's a lot of fun. You just literally click new color palette and then you pick from the wheel. I think I did a short video on one of my other tutorials. So we're going to go here and actually just so you can see what I'm coloring here, I just want to make sure I got my, 
my good old uh, touch point on. So I did the import, so I almost forgot to put it on. So there, now you got my circle. You can see where I'm coloring. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to the palettes. I just made this one the other day and I'm really digging it. It's very like, I call it new, I called it neutral undertones just because there's a lot of browns and darker colors, a couple lighter ones, but it's mostly darker neutral colors. So I'm gonna start with this color, I think. And I just wanna make sure I'm on freehand, I'm on airbrush. I use airbrush a lot for when I um, color skin because I find it just blends really nicely. So I'm just gonna cover the whole area and I'm using the airbrush for it. I'm just gonna color that whole area. It's really nice the way that she drew this because it kind of has the natural shading and stuff in it and the hair looks really cool. I really like this picture. It's very well drawn, very nice. So I was thinking about maybe doing some red in the cheeks. I, I don't want the skin to be perfect because her makeup is so um, kind of wild. So I kind of want her skin tone to be a little off too. I don't want it to be a perfect like matchy matchy uh, skin tone. I want some variation in there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and blend it and make it look different. I'm just using the airbrush. I find airbrush is really nice for when you're starting off blending um, your skin tones, when you're just trying to get it uh, set in and you can use it later on as well. Right now, I'm not too worried about um, my brush sizes and opacities. I'm just adjusting here for around the nose, but um, I do have it on uh, kind of a bigger size. I did have the opacity all the way up. I'm just turning it down here for the nose. Just want to get my shading kind of precise here. So I'm just contouring the nose. I'm actually going to go under the nose and get a little bit of shading here too. And don't be afraid to play with your opacity and your brush size until you find that you are getting the look and the, sh and the spread that you want from it. So like I said, this isn't going to be, um, she's going to have um, regular skin tone, sort of, but it's going to have deeper, darker areas, I think. We'll see how it unfolds. I kind of have a vision. So let's see how my, where my vision takes me. I'm just going to blend. Blend, blend, blend. And then I, what I do is I color match kind of at the barrier where the two blends meet. So this blend is kind of meeting right here at this blend. Then I bring my opacity down and I bring my brush size. My brush size can stay right about there. And then I kind of zoom in in the area and very, very lightly, very lightly, I just kind of do these little circles to kind of blend so you don't see that stark or that uh, prominent variation in the color. So this is how I blend my skin. And then if you have like darker areas like this, it really works well to kind of smooth it out and blend it in. So it's not standing, you see how like it was just like standing out so much. And the more you kind of touch it lightly, very, very lightly, as you can see, the white little dot there, it's going in a circular motion. So very, very lightly, very lightly until you're, you get the blend look that you want. And a good way to hold to, cause I know it's tricky. I'm a very hard presser. I always was even in school. So a way that I kind of gear myself out of that is I hold my pencil towards the end. If you hold it up top, I mean, people can, like I can still, but if you want to do a very easy way of, uh, if you're a hard pusher like I was, then if you just hold the end 
It will really, really help you blend. Blend lightly. It will help you blend lightly. Because I do want those kinds of cool um, undertones with this skin because she is obviously wearing some pretty uh, funky makeup here. So I don't need it to be um, super perfect skin tone. I want it to seem like she's almost wearing like too much blush or she has makeup on her face or caught like a costume almost. Now the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some highlights. So all I did is I'm on this color here, I'm gonna bring it down um, to one of the lighter colors. I'm gonna test it out, test out these variation of lighter blends here. I'm just gonna bring down my brush size a little bit and bring up my opacity a little bit there. And places that I like to highlight on a regular basis, it depends on the lighting though. Um, Got to think about the lighting of your picture, but this is a very um, up and personal kind of close up picture here. So I'm going to highlight her nose and I just kind of, you know, drag it across very gently. I'm doing that gentle, gentle um, circular motion type thing again, just on a lower brush size. And then I do high, tend to highlight a little bit above the lip. I can always fix this later after I color the lips. I'm just trying to get like a little base kind of layer in there. And then under the eyebrow. I just kind of want the light to come down into the eye from here and up through the forehead a little bit. I'm liking the way that that's kind of already happening, the way that I shaded the skin. So I'm just gonna keep in trend with that, playing with my brush size a little bit there. The makeup's gonna get colored anyway, so you won't notice it so much after I do the makeup. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit um, deeper shades again just to the outer side of, uh, it's a process when I do skin, so bear with me here. But I'm just gonna add some shades to the outer side of um, the forehead. And a little bit here. Okay, so I'm just kind of lightening up the ears a bit here so they don't look too dark. And I just want to take away some of this red, actually. because so I don't really want the red to uh, bleed into the ear. Okay, so I'm really liking the way that the skin tone has uh, is coming together here. It's looking good. I'm just going to do a little bit of a lighter highlight on the neck as well. And just so it's kind of catching the light under the under the shading that she naturally added. I don't want a lot though, because it's obviously going to be a little bit darker from the way that she drew this picture. So just a little bit just to kind of offset it a little, give it a little bit more visual interest. Now I'm going to do that color match thing here by the brow. I'm just going to blend over here a little tiny bit. Blending is super important and it really, really helps your, your picture have a sense of realism and depth and structure. And then if you want to kind of lessen the highlights over here kind of blend them so they're not just go like that do the little color match and the blend and then those lines don't look so 
It don't look so like stark. I use that word a lot, but that, and the only way I can say it is bold. I guess bold would be another word. You want those highlights and you can do bold highlights. Um, when you do bold highlights, I usually recommend doing it in some kind of layers like, but uh, everyone has different techniques. I've seen some people who are really good with highlights and um, it just depends on what you're comfortable with. See, I'm kind of adding some here, but I just want to make sure that they're blended properly. put it actually on automatic because I don't want to get, get that color into the ears again and I really just want to shade the edge of the face so it's okay if I have it on automatic. I'm actually using the deepest red on the spectrum for the red that I use actually for the cheekbones and it's giving it's kind of blending in Maybe use a little bit towards the other part of the ear. Just want the control right now, so that's why I have it on automatic. Then I can control how much my highlights are on both sides. skin's looking pretty good. It's coming along um, the way I wanted it, so I'm happy with it. Just going to do a little bit more blending here. And another place that I like to add highlights is the chin. I do add highlights on the chin every so often. Okay. So now that we've done that, I can step away from the skin for a little bit. I can always touch it up later as I'm going because I'm not really going to know how it's looking completely until I start adding um, in other elements from the picture. So let's start coloring um, like the makeup and let's do some fun stuff there. So I'm in neutral undertones and um, I'm thinking I'm actually going to be doing this makeup a kind of purple. So I'm going to go to another palette that I made. And I'm going to just fill it in for now. Just filling it in with uh, using a couple different shades of different purples. It's, I'm gonna do more with it. I just want to get my colors down. And I'm gonna use this off-white kind of purpley color here. And I'm just going to Kind of get the eye going here, get the colors. I'm gonna add some shading to the eye as well, but I just wanna get the, the white in there. Okay, so to add the shading, I'm gonna deepen up that purple, uh, purpley white. If you go to this end, it almost looks pink. So it's like a pinky purpley sort of white. It looks white probably on camera. And I'm just going to, I'm on freehand, I just put on freehand, I'm just going to make some shades here. I'm 
just starting my shade. I'm gonna have to go back because I have to still color the eye part. I just wanna just get it started. Bit of shading and depth as well. Just kind of bleeding into the white of the eye, causing more shading in the white of the eye. And then I might even put some blue in here. So I'm gonna go to automatic because I don't wanna go outside my lines. I might do blue, I'm not sure if I'm gonna like it. It's just an idea I had. Yeah, I think that blue actually looks pretty cool. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use blue too. I'm gonna do some funky makeup because she's obviously wearing funky makeup from the shape of it. So why not indulge and have some fun with it, right? A little bit of highlighting here. Actually, you know what? I liked it better when it was dark, so I'm gonna leave it dark. I like it better dark. Sometimes you don't know unless you try. But I do like a better dark. If I do add highlights, they're going to be much smaller highlights. And I went outside the lines here a bit, so just color match and blend it out. Back to normal. All good. Okay, now if we want to add some cool kind of sparkle and detail to it, we can go to the glitter tool. I'm going to use that same blue. Um, my opacity is down, my brush size is up, which is actually what I want. And then I find the glitter tool is very powerful and you get the best effects when you're doing stuff like this when it's on a lower opacity. That's just my personal kind of experience with it. But if you like it really, really bold, you can do it that way as well. highlights I was talking about but I'm going to use the glitter tool for it I'm just trying to make them even on both sides I'm just gonna get like this cool glitter makeup and you can take it to the next level by um, going and get grabbing the laser tool so just bring your opacity or your brush size excuse me all the way down and leave your opacity up I was saying it backwards there and then I just add kind of little specks of light to the eye. And I try to keep some of them close together, some of them a little bit bigger, just to make a natural glitter effect. Because when glitter sparkles, there's always the big ones that kind of stand out. And then you got the little dots that are close together. I always try to think of what how I see things in real life when I color. Oh, I did some touching there on accident. That's easy. I'll show you a way to fix it. Just color match. Go to your airbrush tool. Or is that already like that? Airbrush. Okay. Up. Oh, because my opacity is down. There we go. 
There we go. And then you can just blend it out simply. Very gently blending it a little bit more. I'm gonna go actually lighten up this brow line over here too. Go to this red. And I'm just going to take it up a little bit over the crease. I'm using a little bit of a brighter red now around the eye just to get this cool kind of effect. Now we'll go back to our blue and back to our laser and finish up this side. So same thing, a little bit of bigger sparkles, some smaller ones and clusters just to make the glitter look natural, somewhat natural. I keep on accidentally, it's because I keep on rubbing my hand over the side, eh? Hold on. Oh, it's too far back. It's because my hand, I'm rubbing it. It's different when I'm coloring straight up and down than when I'm coloring on my lap. So I'm on airbrush, my opacity is all the way up and all I do is I just blend it out. And there, there's a fix. Now let's try to be neater and more careful with my hands. I'm actually just going to put my hand over here so I don't do that again. I'm writing with my palm is what I'm doing. Pressing down with my palm, getting sparkles. So I'm kind of layering this glitter effect. There's the, the glitter brush in the background, and then I'm making the glitter more intense by using the laser tool. It's almost like galaxy eyes. And I'm gonna do the same, I think, down here, I'm gonna add some more glitter. I just think the eyes look better when they're popping and they got that little shine to them. You can even put some down here if you want. I naturally actually highlight uh, the light, like my eyes with glitter sometimes and uh, laser to add speckles of light. But in this case, it's for eyeshadow. But I do this as well around the eyes to add almost like a, a natural sheen to the eyelids. This time it's a little bit more intense because it's makeup. And I just touch things up as I go along, like it should be a little bit darker in this corner, I feel. So I'm gonna go back and just kinda deepen it up over here. Same with over here, I feel like the corners of the eyes should be a little bit more shaded. So I'll go back and do that. There, I think that looks really cool, I like it. Now let's, I'm trying to figure out what color I want to do. Um, her eyes here. Hmm. Maybe like a violet. Let's try like lavender eyes. So I'm going to just go to my regular fill. I'm just going to tap it in there. And then this white will be the highlight part of her eye. I'm going to need a uh, it doesn't seem to be going. There we go. You know what? I actually like it darker. 
Yeah, no, I like it darker. I'm gonna leave it. Okay, now we can't just leave them flat, or we can, like if that's what you wanna do, leave them flat. I'm just gonna go to my recently used colors here so I can plot, pick that purple that I made. And these pinks and stuff will actually work well too. So I'm gonna deepen it, go back to my airbrush. And I'm just going to go back and just fix the shade because the shading should still uh, go into the eye or the pupil or the this part of the eye. And then underneath as well. And add the shading back here and up here at the white of the eye. And then I'm going to add some highlights. I think I might actually not use that purple and use this pink. And I'm going to grab the laser tool. And I'm just going to add these shimmers of light to the eye. So her eyes sparkle. She has these beautiful sparkly eyes now and I just yeah, that looks really great. I want her face to be more shaded and then her makeup to kind of pop through those shades, just kind of stand out. So, and then for these up here, I was thinking about even just doing them. Let me go to my pillow here. I'm just going to try either doing them a dark purple, which almost looks black or a blue but I think I like the darker look better I think I like her eyes standing out and then the other makeup just kind of being there I think that's the look I like and we might even do the lips purple and then color her teeth I'm actually using the pillow with the white so she has natural shading to her teeth but I'm gonna put more shading in as well and then hmm I'm trying to think about her freckles here Yeah, I'm gonna do them dark brown. Okay, there's a couple where there might be, was there a bleed in that one? No, I just hit outside the line. Oh, there's a bleed there though. So I'll just go to my technical pen, my good old technical pen and just manually fill it. And then go back to my fills, carry on. Yeah, if you notice, sometimes in small areas like this, you get a line that is enclosed. It happens all the time. We try to get catch them all, but if you do, just use a technical pen or a write us and we'll fix it for you. We try to catch them all, but sometimes you miss it. See, there's one there, I can tell. So then I'll just use my technical pen to fill it. There we go. And do these guys down here. Well, it's definitely coming together and it's definitely looking cool. So I'm happy about that. Um, now I'm gonna get to go do her lips. I filled them in, but that's not how I'm going to leave them. And I still have maybe a few little highlights and stuff to do on the face too, but we're just gonna take it step by step here. So I'm gonna go to the purple, go to the airbrush, gonna make sure it's on um, automatic mode in this case because I don't want to be having to fix my bleeds and I want a very natural looking shade with a widespread brush and the widespread brush on um, on the airbrush it, it does go out quite far so I don't want to have to be fixing that So I'm just shading around the outer edge of the lip, probably around the inner part too I'm gonna get. 
and go a little bit darker towards the corners and a little bit darker here and then you just kind of get like this shiny lip I'm going to highlight the center a little bit to give it some oomph. And then a lot of times what I do, I don't know if I'm gonna do it here. I'm just gonna show you, I do lines. So I just kind of put my, I'm on airbrush and I put my brush size down to zero. And then I zoom in and I just add these lines and the lips. And I'm using um, the lighter purple and I'm staying in the light areas that I made in the direction that they're made. Like this is curved, so I'm kind of curving it outward. And then I'm going to do it at the top in the lighter areas. And then over here in the lighter areas. And then I lighten it up even more and bring up my brush size to one for this size of a piece. And I'm just going to make those kind of white highlights over top of that, but not as much, just more towards uh, the center. And a little bit wider too, because I, I opened up that brush size, I made it a little bit bigger, right? So then you kind of get the shiny looking saturated lip. And you can even use, a lot of times you could use, if you go to glitter, you can use glitter to highlight your face as well. So let's say I decided I wanted some kind of gold undertones in here. So, or I could color match this, lighten it up so it blends well. And then you can just add that little bit of glitter. You gotta be careful about how you add it though. You just will probably want it a little bit. You don't want very gently. I have my opacity down to, to nothing. And you'll get like that natural, my brush size up, and you get natural kinda highlights with the glitter and if you find they're too dark or you want them blended a little bit just use the old little trick the color match and the airbrush and then you can kind of very softly just blend in those highlights so they look natural you only need a little bit really to make it And vice versa, if you wanna blend the lighter part of the glitter, just color match. A lot of blending, I know. And then we'll go back to the glitter. Just kind of add a little bit more. Skin highlight. Okay. Very cool. And then go to hairbrush. And I'm actually going to take out my blur for a second. Where are you, blur? And I'm going to, to the inner parts of the shading of these eyes, I'm finding that they're looking a little bit 
too abrupt for me. So I'm gonna bring down my brush size and just double check them on automatic here. I switch back so often, so I gotta keep on looking. And I'm just gonna go around where I shaded the eye. And I'm just going to blur it out. So it doesn't look like it's so, so harsh, but it's still there. It just gets blurred out a little bit, looking, making it look a little bit more natural, which is what I want. You can even do it around the lip, the dark parts of the lip to blur the shading into the parts that aren't as shaded. I don't want to lose my shiny lines though, so I'm not going to blur those. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my laser tool and I'm going to experiment with something here. I just want to see if I can add a little bit more highlighting. And I'm actually going to, now that I'm noticing, I'm going to try and blur up here. If it doesn't look good, sometimes when you blur skin, it doesn't look good. So I just want the edges blurred here. And here. Just helps blend it too. Here. around where the nose is here. And you can always shade under the lip more and make like the little the little lines here for the for the lip. And then shade a little bit more under the lip here. Maybe a little bit in the corners. And then go to blur. I'm just going to slightly blur the edges just to give it more blendability and more, a little bit more blending. And then blur here. There. I think that looks really good. It's coming along. Got some natural highlights in the cheek and in the nose. Now we can color the hair. And... I'm thinking we're gonna do the hair, <laughs> probably purples and blues. I'm gonna go back to that sugar skull and I'm gonna use pillow for some natural shading. I'm gonna grab this dark purple. I'm gonna actually make it even darker. And I'm gonna tap towards the outer edge of the picture to get my shading going up towards her face. Then I'm gonna grab the blue. And do these parts like a funky blue color.
I'm going to grab, before I forget, because this is a minor detail I don't want to forget, I'm going to go to my white and I'm going to go to my airbrush. I'm going to just bring this down here. I'm just going to add a couple more. That's why I like doing the eyes off white and not white, because then you can add more highlights to them. And the teeth as well. I want to add more highlight to the middle of the teeth. And I actually want to add, go to freehand for a second. I want to add a little bit more shading to the top. Just a little bit. Okay, that's good. Now I'll go back to my recently used colors here because I have my purples that I used. You can do um, lines in the hair if you want to make it look more natural. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, you can put it on automatic so we have a little bit more control. So I would use like this light purple and away from the hair, you just add strands and do it in the most comfortable position that you can put your hand in. And you just get like this natural looking hair. And you don't have to make it look perfect either. You can even go like up and down like this just to get them in quick. It doesn't have to look perfect. I just want towards the bottoms of the hair because the top is um, darker shaded. Even just going up and down for these bigger areas is fine. Just a little spot in here. So I'm just actually scribbling. Anybody can scribble. So just up and down. And I just want to get this little spot that I missed. Come on, get in there. Why aren't you getting in there? Hmm, doesn't look like I'm gonna get in there. Oh well, you can barely notice it anyway. And then, go back to that. Where can I get in there? Oh, there we go. Just on the wrong thing there. Okay, so then I'm just gonna finish this off. And then if you want, you could even do something funky, like get a bright pink and just kind of add some pink in there. But what I would do is I'd bring it up to one to get a little thicker strands so you notice them a bit more. It's always good to layer on different sizes. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna add the pink really quick. I'm going in the in a comfortable direction. Okay. I'm gonna just grab the black and just shade. No, maybe I don't want to do that actually just towards the upper part of the ear like here okay
Okay. Let's bring it up a bit higher here. Then I'm going to go to blur. I'm just going to blur the ends of like where it kind of comes together. Or where it ends. Go to my airbrush. Go to freehand. bit of shine to the hair if you want to and then the last thing I would do is I'm just trying to think what else do I want to do here hairbrush freehand Maybe just shade this a bit. And now we can kind of look back at our picture and see what else we want to add. Sometimes um, I add highlights to above the lip. Below the lip line. It's not necessary, but you can even deepen the highlight on the nose a little bit. Make it stand out a bit more. There's always little things that you can add at the end little I call them finishers finishing touches I think I'm pretty happy with it though I'm not gonna go too insane on it I'm pretty liking it and this is what I'm talking about when I add dots to the eye. I'm just kind of adding a couple little extra highlights to the eye up there. So let's look it over really quick. You could add a little bit more highlight down here with the laser. You want to make it even a little bit more shinier. Maybe add a couple more sparkles up here. The cream. Okay, and I honestly don't think I'm gonna do much more than that. I really like it, I think it looks good. I had a lot of fun coloring this with you today. This is from Annabelle 
drawing or Annabelle. And like I said at the beginning of the video, in case you miss it, she has been a collaborator of ours in Zinnia and in Pigment. You might see a couple videos of her on Pixite's channel. And she has some really amazing pieces to color as well. Very talented. So thanks for joining me today. This is Brienne from Pixite. I'll see you again next time, guys. Bye.